Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we are going to be exploring and reviewing Arch Labs Linux. This is the latest official release from Arch Labs, and I'm just going to be looking through some of the stuff that it has to offer. So the first thing that I noticed while installing Arch Labs is that the installer is a bit out of date with a text-based user interface that helps you install this Linux distribution, but it's easy enough to follow through if you know your terms. This Linux distribution, however, is more tailored to intermediate users, and it states that directly on the website. But if we were to compare this installation process to something like regular old Arch, where you have to go through and install and set up your system completely by yourself, this Arch Labs installer is a very nice feature. One nice thing that you'll get with the installer is a bunch of different options that allow you to select between multiple different shells, desktops, packages, kernel types such as the Zen or hardened kernel setup and your file system setup of course. But for myself I chose to go with ZSH as my default shell here. I'm running OpenBox with LightDM for my window manager and something special about Arch Labs is that it's based off of Bunsen Labs because a few Arch users really enjoyed that distribution and based Arch Labs around it. So if you're familiar with Bunsen Labs of that Linux distribution I'll leave a link in the description below. I believe the default desktop environment over there is open box as well. So that's what I chose to go with today. And if you're new and stopping by to watch the video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more updates. I also went with the standard partitioning scheme. There's no extra packages in here. So all there really is here is the open box package with the Arch Labs skeleton for open box. There's no swap, system MD, boot is my bootloader, and I didn't make any edits to my configuration files on the system where it prompted me to do so at the end of the install, but I do like that you get this nice list of some config files which you can edit later. So as you see on the desktop environment here, nothing in the background, just a few things up here on the status bar. And what I really enjoy about this distribution is how it's a minimal install of Arch, and you get to run through the Arch Labs installer and pick and choose exactly how you want your Arch system set up. This keeps away much of the bloat, and all the unnecessary packages that you don't need won't be installed, and the installer script, of course, makes everything very easy to install. Also, another great bonus, of course, is that this is based off of Arch, so if you like using AUR, and Pac-Man for installing your packages, then you'll feel right at home. There also is a wide variety of window managers and desktop environments as shown in the list. So let's continue by checking out this open box desktop environment on Arch Labs. All right, if I go to the top left-hand corner, I have my little rocket, which opens a sub menu. And here I have a web browser, which of course there's none installed. I can't select anything. That's because I went with absolute minimal here, so I'd have to install it using Pac-Man. Now, if I continue down to my file manager, there's none as well. I went really minimal here, so I just wanted the very basic packages that would allow me to run my system with OpenBox. Now terminal, the default terminal here is Xterm for me. At least that's what I set it to, and we'll keep going down the list. In accessories, we do get a few accessories here. We have the compositing editor, a shortcut to the file manager, the terminal, Compton, Nitrogen to change up the background if necessary, and PyCom. In internet, we have a couple browsers and a mail reader, including LFTP. Of course, the web browser and mail reader will not work as is because I don't have a default one installed, but I can install something like Firefox fairly easily through the terminal. Going down to multimedia, we have pulse audio, volume control, and a couple other cute utilities. And continuing on to the preferences, we have a render for our display, accessibility, network configuration. We can change up the appearance here to different types of styles, icons, fonts, and various different settings and appearance. We have color profiles, display properties, Kickshaw, which is a menu editor, and as we continue down, mouse and touchpad support with the open box configuration and key bindings, a power manager, which most of these are actually going to be the XFCE default utilities here. So if we clicked on power manager, we can see it's XFCE power manager here. Settings editor gives you access to basic settings 
and Manager gives you a GUI method of getting to those same settings. So Preferences gives us access to a bunch of customization. System will give us access to a few system tools here. It does come with the default conky. So if we start that up, it should start in the background. And as you can see here, it has. I've been running for about 30 minutes. We'll get into this in just a moment. Closing out my conky, I'll continue down and Xterm is installed, Uxterm as well. I installed HTOP a little earlier, so that's one extra package I added in. And finally, you have the lock, which allows you to lock and unlock the screen fairly quickly. And then exiting out, you can log out, suspend, reboot, or power off the computer. In the top left-hand corner, next to the launch bar, we have the terminal emulator, which was X term by default. File manager, we don't have one installed. We have web browser, which again, we don't have a default one installed. And if we right click, we have some of the same options as well as a few more like screenshot, recent places or shortcuts to popular places on the computer, as well as some config files. Preferences allows you to open up configs for various different Utilities, help and info, gets you access to the Arch Labs forum, homepage, and knowledge base, and gives you a few guides on various different utilities as well. Key bindings, so if we open that up, it tells us all the open box key bindings so far. That way you can understand how to interact with this window manager. We can also lock the screen or exit out the window manager open box. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit that like button for me. It really does help me out. On the right hand side, we have the current time. And if we click on that, we can see a calendar as well as the local time. To the left of that, we have just a few options. If we click on the time again, that'll exit out. We have volume control, which I accidentally started two of these up. But here, if we right click on one of these, we can change up preferences, open the mixer. To the right of that, we can enable our networking and set up our connections through here so we can set up our wireless or wired connections from here. And then to the right of that, we have to put the computer in either presentation mode or power manager settings. I believe this is the notifications menu as well. So there's really not too much installed here and it really just becomes your playground here in Arch Linux to install whatever you'd like and really make it your own customized Linux desktop experience. But since it's so minimal, some really nice things that we should check out is going to be the system resource usage and of course some system details. So let's check those out. If I start a terminal and run HTOP, we'll see what the current system usage is. I've been up for about 35 minutes now and my memory usage is only at 271 megabytes using OpenBox. There's only 42 tasks running and 74 threads and it's quite a minimal yet powerful desktop experience here. Everything loads super fast and it's great because it doesn't have all the extra bloat that you don't need. All right, so let's check out some system information as well. Running NeoFetch. So this is based off of Arch Linux. I'm currently running this on a virtual machine. This is running kernel 5.9 and has 631 packages currently installed. It's using ZSH as the default shell, and that's at version 5.8. The window manager is OpenBox, and the theme is Arch Labs Dark. The theme here is Iowata Dark, with the icon set Arch Labs Dark. Default terminal is Xterm, and we're using the monospace font. I'm currently emulating this on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series at 3.6 gigahertz, and the memory usage, of course, is very low at the 273 megabytes. I got to say that I really like the minimal setup experience as well as the minimal options that you can set during the install. I know it could be daunting on some new users to go through the setup process, but it's again much better than setting up your own Arch Linux distribution. The next step for me is installing this on a personal computer and checking it out on there. I don't foresee any problems just because they're really not putting anything extra on here that you don't need. So there's not a bunch of packages that can interfere with each other and cause system issues. Well, that's about it for this review. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, make sure to go ahead and post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.